welcome to my vintage love. Today I'm so excited to bring you a 1960s mod makeup with my beautiful friend Haley Ciel who is an actress and model and I'm so excited to have her and do this makeup on her beautiful face. So please come with me as I show you how to get this look and tell you a little bit about the 1960s and the history of the makeup at the time. Here we are with Haley, who is freshly fresh faced and moisturized and ready to go. One of the things about 60s makeup is that there was a big shift away from pancake makeup and heavier makeup towards more natural foundation. Uh, the buzzwords of the, of the decade were natural and luminous and words like that that we still use today. Um, so we're not gonna do a pancake makeup or even a pan stick makeup, but I'm gonna be using um, a, a liquid foundation, the Lorac, Pro Soft Focus Longwear Foundation. I've been using this one on myself. I really like it. It stays really well and it just gives nice coverage but not too, too much. And when you're doing a lot um, on, the, on the eyes or anything, you really wanna keep the skin extra luminous and extra natural looking. So that's something to think about too. I mean, you always want the skin to look great and Haley has beautiful skin, but um, mm -hmm. it's just something to think about because if your skin looks good and your skin looks natural and gorgeous, then that will just make everything else look great too. So this is the IT number seven brush. I use this all the time. I love it. So I put a little bit of shade one and shade two on my back of my hand. And we're just gonna go in there. So we're just gonna buff this in. There was a big movement in the 60s towards youth. as <laughs> The youth quake and all of those things that were very exciting. Um, the 70s and the 20s actually had a lot in common in terms of aesthetics and also this kind of pushing away of what came before it. The 20s was a reaction against Edwardianism and being cooped up in, in tight lace corsets and things like that. Um, and that's why the the straight up and down silhouette became very popular. And the same thing happened in the, in the, seven, in the 60s too. Um, you think about the, the 50s and you know, the corsets you know, being very popular and kind of holding women in and um, red lipstick and the winged liner and the 60s just came along and just put all of that on its head. And I read a great quote about how it was the first time in history, the 60s, when, um, when girls didn't want to look like their mothers anymore, but the mothers wanted to look like their daughters. Oh. So that's a really good way to think about it. Yeah, that's so interesting. The um, silhouette shape is literally the same as the 20s. It's literally the same as the 20s, oh, yeah. I never, I never saw that. Yeah, and the, the shape of the eye, too. The 20s was um, about that downturned eye that is kind of a tricky eye look for us in the modern day when we want everything to be up. Yeah. And the same with the 60s. The 60s was very much about a, a big round eye, but the, the shape was very down, too. Like, the eyeliner is really literally going down. We'll talk more about that when we get to the eye makeup. But um, yeah, it's, it's really fascinating to look at all those overlaps. Because nothing happens in a vacuum, <laughs> as I like to say in every video. There's always a reason why things are happening with makeup and fashion and those things. So I'm going to put a little concealer on Haley. They definitely had had concealer by the 60s. It came um, out to general public in the 50s, so it's definitely something they would have been wearing. I'm thinking maybe young girls at that point would have just been applying concealer where they need it, um, but I'm going to go ahead and put, I've decanted some concealer into a little palette here, and I'm just going to put a little on the back of my hand and just give, just apply where we need it. So I'm just using a little buff just to brush in, just where Haley needs a little more coverage. I'm going to go ahead and conceal under Haley's eyes. We might have to go back and wipe away or redo the under eye concealer because we might get a little falling from the eye makeup that we're going to do. It's not a problem. I just like to kind of see what the eyes look like with the concealer under them because it kind of gives me a better idea of what the face makeup is going to look like once we're all done. And if you, this is a pretty extreme eye makeup. So if you feel more comfortable just going in to do the eye makeup first, totally fine, not a problem. I just kind of like to see what the skin is gonna look like once we have it all buffed and ready to go. So the foundation and the concealer are done and the skin's looking really nice. And I'm just gonna move on to the eyes because the eyes were clearly the most important part of the mod makeup. Mm -hmm. Basically it was all about the eyes. The graphic liner, the drawn on lashes, and one of my favorite bits of discovery when I was doing the research for this was that Twiggy basically did her own makeup. 
Fashion makeup artists really weren't around in the 60s. They didn't come around till a little bit later. And she had developed that makeup by herself as a teenager. She was just like playing around in her bedroom. And she was inspired by Greta Garbo. That liner in the socket that we, that's so very 60s, that's a look that Greta Garbo did. It's very specific to her. So she was very inspired by the 30s screen sirens, but most of all Greta Garbo. And you can literally look at pictures and see the exact, exactly what she was looking at. So it's really fascinating. And also the, um, the under eye, uh, the drawn on lashes, was inspired by the doll Raggedy Ann. You know, yeah. we all have those little Raggedy Ann I dolls. I got Raggedy Ann dolls. Yeah. yeah. So that's where she, she kind of took those two things together, the Greta Garbo influence and the Raggedy Ann doll, and created this amazing, iconic eye makeup. Wow. And it's that's really, incredible. really fascinating. Um, so we have the really classic Twiggy eye makeup. But then there's all the other mod eye makeups. So there's a really interesting film called... Um, Qui êtes-vous, Polly Magoo? It's a, which translates to Who Are You, Polly Magoo in um, English. It's a French art house film, and it has some amazing mod makeups in it. Ooh. So it's a really cool film to check out if you want to get inspired by the, all of that. Yeah. And they really get into like the, like the even crazier, wider shapes that they were doing back then. Yeah. So really, really recommend all of that. And I just, you know, it's, it's really great. Like, I'm going to put some pictures up of Greta Garbo, but go look at Greta Garbo's makeup and you can really see how those two things really like came together. And I think it's really fascinating because as I've said, nothing happens in a vacuum. And I love, <laughs> I love seeing how pe people were inspired by other people. That's yeah. so incredible. I never knew Twiggy did her own makeup. Yeah. That was like yeah. an original of hers. Yeah, all of, well basically all of the, the 60s models were doing their own makeup. So like Verushka was, um, was doing her own makeup too. She was a, another very famous model at the time, this beautiful Russian, uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous model. Um, and she was doing these crazy makeups on her, the cover of Vogue, the cover of Bazaar. She was also doing her own makeup. Models were not just models back then. They had to do everything. They might have a hairstylist on set, is my understanding, but they were almost always doing their own makeup. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so. That's so. Model, model appreciation. Yes. <laughs> That's so interesting, though. Yeah. It makes me think of, like, when, when did they start having a makeup artist? Um, like... Makeup artists started to become a little more common in the late 70s, early okay. 80s. There was a man named Way Bandy, and okay. he was one of the very, very first makeup artists. Oh, wow. Yeah, and he's still okay. at, he has some books that you can still find. Um, so I believe he started in the late 70s and really became a much bigger makeup artist in the 80s. Okay. So, yeah, that was kind of when it became a thing. That's so yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Um, so we're going to move on to the eyes, and this is the pure white MAC chroma line. So this is just pure straight white. We're going to go for a super pure, true kind of Twiggy's look. So we're gonna, we have today we have kind of like a Twiggy eye makeup, but then kind of like a Jean Shrimpton hair situation going on here today. I'm just going to get a little bit on our spatula here. So I'm just going with a little flat brush. And this is just going to provide just a nice pop of white on the lid. Because we really want that nice contrast between the black and the white. So I'm just going in, I'm going to create a nice base of white. And a really easy way to soften this whole look would be to use um, a more cream color or a light pink or something like that. This is definitely the starkest look that we're going for today. But there are always ways to soften it up if you don't want to go quite as hard or quite as graphic. Because this really is a look, the seams in its most extreme form, it is extreme, but we still use this look. It inspires so much of fashion today. I've done photo shoots where I've you know done this look that's been influenced by this look. The floating liner, the, the crease that we're going to do soon, that is something that is used all the time. And it's such a, it's just a look that you can really take either way. You can make it more extreme or less extreme. You can make it soft. You can make it hard. So it really is one of those makeups that's just, it's good to know how to do it and where it comes from if you are in the fashion world. Anna Sui loves this, uh, loves the 60s. So I've done her show many times and it's always a 60s vibe and it's always a cut crease like this, um, drawn on lashes and various colors, but it's always something in this vein. Let's go ahead and carry it up pretty high. I'm kind of trying to keep most of the white very concentrated on the lid and the lash line, but then go ahead and just kind of fan it out even all the way up to the brow. Okay, so we have Haley's left eye done, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the white on the right eye. 
Haley has the pure white chroma line on both eyes, and we are going to move on to some eyeshadow. And this is the Visart Pro Palette 1. I've used this, I think, in almost every tutorial I've done so far. Um, a great, great palette every color you could want. They're all matte, um, but you can pretty much do anything you want with this palette. It's pretty spectacular. So especially for today's look with just the stark white and the stark black, perfect look. Um, so we have a nice pure white here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that over the white that we already have. Go in there. This is just to help make the white pop even more because white is something that you need to layer quite a bit to really get the, um, the payoff that you want. And Haley mentioned while I was doing her other eye was that um, Mary Quant was a really famous uh, fashion designer at the time, and she claimed that she mentioned the mini skirt and um, mm -hmm. and was a hugely influential. And she also started her own makeup line in the in 1966, I believe it was, and she was very influential and in just you know like that attitude of play and different colors and a real a real shift away from the um, the look of the 50s in terms of makeup and also packaging and things like that. Because they kind of realized that like, there were all these teenagers with money to spend and they didn't want to look like their mothers, so they had to come up with a whole new, whole, all new products and all new packaging and things like that. So everything became very, um, much more, much more stark. Her packaging was, you know, white and black and red and yellow and not a lot of gold mm. to be seen anymore. And then Biba, the brand Biba, came along a little bit after that, and was um, their brand. Came, their brand came around in the mid '60s, and they started making makeup in the '70s. And that was kind of more of like a vampy, black and gold, bruised fruit colors, mm -hmm. '20s, you know, vampy kind of feel. Um, and I'm going to do a whole video on that look because it is absolutely spectacular, <gasps> and it's such a beautiful look. Oh. And I can't wait to do that one. <laughs> I love Biba. Oh, I love, I love. I want to time travel just so I can go back and shop in the department uh, store, honestly. It makes me sad that I can't do that. <laughs> okay, so Haley has on the white chroma line topped with the white eyeshadow. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and do the first layer of the liner across the top of the lid. The most exciting the, part. Yes, <laughs> this is where <laughs> stuff gets exciting and fun. <laughs> And a little challenging. Another thing to think about is when you're doing, the more extreme a makeup look is, and they kind of go for hair too, but the more extreme a makeup look is, the longer that time period is where you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? It looks crazy. But just hang with it because it is going to come together in the end. For me, that kind of happens when I get the lashes on, but like, don't worry, it's, it's going to look good. <laughs> Don't be scared. Like my hair earlier. Yeah. <laughs> and my makeup earlier. I was doing my own makeup. I was like, oh, I don't know. But then once I got the lashes on, I was like, all right, yeah. here we are. We've we're arrived. In. Yes. So I'm just going to, because like I said, we're doing just a plain white and black look. I'm going to use this pure black down here. And this is a two and two brush from MAC. Really, really good. I really, I really like using this brush just to get into the root of the lashes. I am cheating a little bit because, I'm, because I am going in there with eyeshadow first. This is a technique that I really like to use. They did have liquid liner back then, they had cake liner and they had pencils. So could have been using any of those. Um, I just wanna make sure we get this, this color right next to the lash line. Mm -hmm. It makes a really big difference in the quality and the final look. So that's what I'm doing right now. Nice loaded up brush here. And I'm just gonna start in the inner corner. I'm just gonna go in there and press that shadow into the lash line as close as humanly possible. You could absolutely stick, skip the step and go straight to a, a cake liner or a gel liner or a pencil. I just really like this step in general. Look down at my corner. Just to give it that much more oomph. I'm using the sponge on Haley's upper lid just to lift up the lid a bit. Uh, look down that way for me. You don't have to do this on yourself. It is just something that I like to do when I'm doing makeup on other people because it gives me more access to that lash line. It's just a little trick that I use. And I, I do find it very handy when I'm doing liner. 
open for me? Okay. So we have a nice, really tight, tight line here. I hope you can see that there's no gap between the lash line and the lid. And I'm just taking this liner to the very edge of the eye and I'm making no effort to lift it up, up at the end. I'm really going with the natural um, shape of the downturn of the eye. So I'm just gonna leave that liner there for now and do the other side. So Haley has on that first round of eyeliner in black eyeshadow. And what I'm gonna move on to now is I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the crease line in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the Shu Umuro brush, a really tiny brush, very similar to the one we just used, but even smaller. And I'm actually gonna use a taupe color to map out the shape of the liner because it's, a, it's very important, the shape and where it lays, and it's much easier to play with a taupe eyeshadow than it is to go straight in with um, something black, a black liner or a black eyeshadow even. Oh so it's it's a little it's a little trick it's a little cheat. <laughs> that just rocked my world. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like all those times where I put it on and then take it off and then put it on and then take it off and then yeah. wash my face. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean it's, it's, it's these little things that make it so much easier. You just really just have to be like, just make it easy on yourself. You know, yeah. taupe anything that's lighter is always going to be easier to wash on something that's darker. Um, so I think I'm going to go in with something you know, in this world, any light color will do. A gray would be fine. And again, if you're feeling confident and you want to go right in there with a black, by all means, do that. Uh, more power to you. Um, this is just, I just think it makes it a little bit easier. And give yourself time. I say this in every video, but especially for an, uh, an eye look like this, this is an extreme eye look. Mm -hmm. And you want to, you know, try and get the eyes to match as much as they can. Um, everyone's eyes are different, so it's challenging. Um, so, but give yourself time. This isn't probably a look you're going to be able to whip out in like 15 minutes. You know, like yeah. give yourself some time so you can really do it and enjoy it while you're doing it. So I had Haley open up her eyes because what we want to do is we want to create a line that we can actually see. So we want it to be a little above the crease. So I'm just going to gently sketch that on. And this is going to be something that's very, very much determined by your eye shape and and where it's gonna look best on your eye. If you have a massive, massive lid, like Twiggy, you are very lucky, and this will probably be easier for you than if you have <laughs> a small eye or, a, a, or, hooded, or hooded or something like that, yeah. yeah. Um, but definitely the best thing to do while you're doing this is just look straight in the mirror and not do it while your eye is closed because you really do wanna see it. I think you had a question for me earlier. Oh, Haley. yes. Um, I was wondering, you know, today we have like YouTube tutorials mm -hmm. and um, this eye makeup look is so intricate. How would young women during that time learn how to do this type of makeup? So I think that's a really good question. Um, I think there was just such an explosion of creativity back then. I think there was much more room for play, um, but also um, magazines, there was much more color in print magazines back then. So there would have been more direction of how to of okay. how to apply makeup. And because of the color, you would have been able to see more color in magazines. Okay. So it was easier f to kind of see what was being done. Okay. Um, so there's, again, that correlation between what was happening in the media and then what was happening with makeup and beauty and fashion and all those things. And also something to note is that there were more, um, something I read was that there were more makeup brushes available. So you went from there probably not being a lot of makeup brushes available, which I, I noticed in my research when I was doing 30s, 40s, 50s makeup, to more makeup being available, um, to, to more brushes being available, I'm sorry, because this makeup obviously requires some pretty like pretty detailed brushes. This isn't a look you can do without really good stuff, yeah. um, fine detail stuff. So I think that's another reason um, that this kind of look became more prominent back then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it was a combination of, you know, just the the zeitgeist of the time, mm -hmm. being allowed to experiment more uh, as a young person especially, and also the media that was available. And like I said before, um, a really easy way to keep, I mean, this is a, the look I'm doing now, like the true white and black look is very, it's extreme. Um, and it, you know, if you want to rock it every day, that's great. But if you wanted to rock a, um, a version of this where it was softer um, and maybe a little more like day-to-day -day friendly, um, you know, you could 
you could do a, a brown line or a gray line and just do an eyeshadow or do it with an eyeshadow and a pencil so the line is softer and not so graphic. So that's also definitely like an option that you can do um, if you want to just keep it, keep it softer. And if you wanted to do this with colors, that would be a way to really like, you know, make it even more exciting. <laughs> It kind of reminded me a little bit of, um, you know, I was thinking about that picture of, now that we're thinking about Twiggy without, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing her own makeup. Mm -hmm. And then I thought of that picture of her with the big flower, you mm -hmm. know, painted oh, around her eye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the 60s, it seems like makeup moved, and I'm just guessing at this, but makeup moved from being almost something to make yourself beautiful to literally like your body becoming a canvas. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a really good point. Yes. And in the sixties there, there was definitely like three distinct looks. It was the, the traditional, the ladylike, which was carryover from the fifties, the mod and then the hippie. So I think the mod and the hippie really were seeing themselves as, as you know, your body is a canvas. So Mary Quant in the 60s came out with this like tin of wax crowns basically with the instructions that were just like, paint a flower on yourself, paint on yourself, have fun. Um, oh so that gosh. was something that actually was happening very much in that time. Yeah, and I think, I think people really were viewing themselves, their entire bodies and their faces at, as canvases yeah. as evidenced by that famous picture of Twiggy with the flower drawn on her face nice. and all of those kind of things and hippies drawing on themselves as well. So yeah, it's a really good observation. I love that. Yeah. And the 60s also was was the first decade where up until that time you could really there was really like one general look, you know, you think of the 20s, you think of the 30s, you think of the 40s, you think of the 50s. Um, it was like one look. And the 60s was really the first time when that just really splintered. So we have like three distinct looks and it really just like the everything just kind of like, you know, the whole world exploded, but that included beauty as well. <laughs> Haley has on um, this lovely crease cut crease here. Um, I went over the taupe and just made a gray line so it'll blend into the black a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and do the um, other eye now. So Haley has on the cut crease in a nice shade of taupey gray, so which gives me a, um, a blueprint of where to put the line in black. So I'm going to go in with the black now and I'm going to be using the classic Black Track by MAC in Fluid Line. Love this stuff. Um, there's lots of different gel liners on the market now. I just happen to like this one. Um, whichever one floats your boat is great. But this one is just really, I find that it works really well. And as long as it's moist, if you keep it moist, it works really well and glides really smoothly. And I'm gonna be using this with a Smith 202 brush. Great little liner brush. The smaller the brush, the better for things like this because you want super, super detail for this kind of stuff. So I just put a little of the black track on a spatula and I'm just getting that on the brush and I'm gonna go in and do Haley's lash line first and then I will go and do go over the um, the, flo the floating line that I just did and this is really a personal thing if you want to do it in a different order that's fine this is just kind of the way I like to do it and kind of the flow that I get into so look down that way for me so I'm starting in the inner corner and I'm just gonna go in and to go over that line that we created. You could definitely do this with a pen liner, like a Stila Stay All Day. I do find that there's a certain amount of flexibility with a gel liner that I like a lot, so that's why I end up using it for looks like this. Okay, so just look straight ahead for me. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create that downward line at the edge of Haley's eye. Like I said before, this isn't a up look, this is a down shaped look. And here's a little tiny, tiny Q-tip. These will come in very, very handy. I put some Makeup Forever Send Size on it and I'm just gonna clean up that line. Q-tips are your friends, especially in looks like this. Please do not be afraid to go in there and clean up any line work that you're doing because we all need a little help and it is totally fine to go in there and clean up that line. And so also I'm kind of helping those lines go in the same direction and the same angle because that will really give us a nice 
it just creates such a nice cohesiveness to the look of those if these two lines are in the same angle. So Haley has on the fluid line on her left eye, and I'm, you can probably see how much that more is popping the look, and I've carried it down on the side to match the angle of the, of the floating line above it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on, the, on her right side. So Haley has the gel liner on top of both lids, and now I'm gonna go in and do the gel liner um, across that floating lid that I sketched out earlier with the taupe. So same thing, we got our black track by MAC, and our 202 Smith brush, and I'm just gonna go in and follow that line that I did before. And like I said before, if you wanna go straight in with that black track or black pencil or black liner, you can absolutely do that, but I really do find that this makes it easier. I am trying to cover the pre-existing line. I'm basically using it as a template of where to go over but it's so light that if I did want to go a little bit thinner, that would, that would be fine too. Um, I am gonna have to go back in with a Q-tip and kind of clean up those edges because it's not, it's a little, a little fumbly, but that's okay. If you're doing this on yourself, it can be very helpful to to steady your hand is you really want to be able to have a steady hand. So if you can balance your your elbow on something, that can be very helpful to getting a nice steady line. So you can really see the matching of the angle of the line coming from the lid and the line coming from the floating line. And that really helps, as I mentioned before, to really tie the whole look of it together. So this line is a not as clean as I would like it to be, so I'm gonna go in there and clean it up a little bit more. I'm gonna put a little more gel liner and then I'm gonna go in with a Q-tip covered in makeup remover to just make sure it's nice and clean. Just a little bit of cleanup. And I think it's important to remember too that they really, obviously we want the lines to be as clean as possible, but you should still be having fun with it. And so don't get too, too hung up on, oh my God, it has to be absolutely perfect because if you look at the pictures of Twiggy and, and, other, and other models from the 60s, they weren't, it wasn't the Instagram, you know, face tune perfection that we, that we have today. And I'm just going in with a little bit of white just to clean that up. So I'm done doing the gel liner on both the top and the bottom lines. So I'm going to go ahead and do that gel liner on the floating line in the other eye. So Haley now has on the gel liner along the lash line and along the floating lines. I've cleaned them up so they're, they're looking pretty good and gone in with any white eyeshadow to clean up any areas where I had to clean up before, um, which you're going to want to do. So I'm going to go ahead now and draw on the iconic Twiggy lashes. Um, and again, we are going to be using the MAC Black Track. You can definitely use a pencil for this. You might want to be careful if you use a pencil because, because of the waxiness of the pencil, it can tend to move around a little bit, especially under the eye because of the natural creases under the eye. So do be careful if you do decide to use a pencil. But um, gel liner and a tiny brush can't go wrong. And I should say if you, uh, uh, and I've mentioned this before, the this is a big look and the lashes definitely take it to that next level of being a big look. So if you, if you don't want to go all the way with drawing the lashes on, this would be a great place to stop and put, the, put some mascara on and mascara, a lot of mascara on the bottom and then some false lashes, which is more or less what I did to my own makeup today. Um, the drawing on the lashes is definitely gonna take it to that next level. So Haley's gonna be looking up for me, which is great. And again, what we want to try and do is we want to try and match the, the angle, we have this nice matching angles of the floating line and the lash line. So try and match that angle with the, the first lash that you put on. And what actually what works better is to come from the outside in, so you can kind of go like this with the, la with the gel liner and the brush. And then once you have that basic shape, you can kind of play around with it just a wee bit. Okay, all right. 
So we have that nice, nice fluid and matching angle to that. So I'm gonna get a little more gel. It's really important to, to be using nice moist gel that's moving very easily when you're doing these lines. Otherwise, it will make your life very, very challenging. And this is kind of a challenging enough look on its own that you don't want to make <laughs> up, the, uh, up the difficulty level <laughs> unnecessarily. <laughs> Do you have a recommendation for like how many lines or no? Just Not play? really. It's very much just playing. Just playing. No real, no real recommendations. It would definitely depend on the shape and size of your eye. If you have a small eye, you'll probably need more. I'm sorry, you'll probably need fewer. And if you have a big eye, you'll probably need more. And you do gradually with the angle want to start more angled and then kind of go more straight down as we go oh, further in. Okay. Again, that is just a recommendation. It's really all about playing. And if you wanted to go in and map these out using an eyeshadow like I did for the, for the floating line, that would be an option too. I'm gonna do one more tiny little one and then we'll be good with this eye. Great, so I'm really happy with how this is looking. So yeah, this is I think a great lash and I'm gonna go ahead and match the lashes on the other side. So Haley has both eyes of the drawn on lashes and I definitely can't, can't complete this make, eye makeup without mentioning mm -hmm. Cleopatra, the movie with Elizabeth Taylor that came out in 1963, oh. which clearly influenced the mods and the huge amount of eye makeup that was happening at the time. You know, you think of those amazing Elizabeth Taylor makeups in her, that movie and the liner and the color and everything. It's just mwah, so good. And she would go out uh, while they were filming the movie, she would go out with the makeup on in Rome with Richard Burton and be photographed by the paparazzi. Oh so my gosh. she would be, be seen offset in this amazing, gorgeous eye makeup, oh. over the top eye makeup. So I think that helped to normalize th this eye makeup a little bit. Well, Elizabeth Taylor's doing it, so why can't I kind of yeah. thing. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to curling the lashes. We're going to do mascara and then false lashes. So look over my shoulder here. So this is a Troy Surratt lash curler. And if you're curling, I'm sorry, if you are doing false lashes, it's really important to just get a nice curl on the lash. Curling the lashes is always a good idea, no matter what makeup you're doing, but especially if you're doing a, a false lash, I really like to make sure I get a good curl. Okay, great. Mm. Next up is mascara. I'm gonna be using the Benefit Roller Lash. Any nice black mascara will do. I do like this one because it helps to keep the lashes nice and curled. And we're gonna be doing a nice coating of top and bottom mascara. You really wanna get a lot of mascara. If you don't wanna do a false lash, go for it with the mascara for this look. You really cannot have enough lashes for this kind of look in all honesty, so just go for it. So Haley has mascara on top and bottom, and we now we're gonna go in with the false lashes. <laughs> false lashes are super important to this look. Of course, you could just end with the mascara, but really, once those false lashes go on, that's when it really comes alive. So lashes were really important back in the 60s. It was really the first era when it was okay for like everyday women. Well, everyday women started to wear false lashes. Before then, it had really been relegated to Hollywood and models and photo shoots and things like that. But the 60s was with this huge explosion of lashes and they were available everywhere in different lengths and different styles and different fabrics. Um, so it was really just a fun time to be experimenting with lashes. And women wouldn't wear just one pair, they would wear two, three, four stacked together to get a oh huge, gosh. huge look, the mods in particular. So I have um, quite a few different pairs. So I'm gonna be trying out to see like what really looks the best. And I'm, I wanna stack at least two pairs together. So we'll see what looks the best on Haley. When I'm testing, I'm really just looking for what looks the best on Haley's lid and also just, yeah, what gives the most, the best look and what plays together the best. So we really want a lot of length right now. So I actually think I'm gonna try and, these are Makeup Forevers. I'm gonna start out with these just to see what looks, see how these look. So I just like to wrap the lash around my finger here and to make sure it's nice and not too stiff. Open foot. Ooh, yes girl. <laughs> 
That is a lot. That is a very long lash, and I like it. So I think we're going to go with these just because they're very long. And then um, I might just put a wispy, which is a little, a little thicker on that. So what I've done is I've put together the very long Makeup Forever lash that we just had with a Ardell Wispy lash, and I'm stacked those together, and I'm gonna put it on Haley's eye just to see what that looks like so we can really get that really, really strong mod lash look. Okay, there we go. So I really like the way this is looking with the length and the and the thickness of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and they're already kind of stuck together with the adhesive. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put a layer of glue and then put those on Haley's eye. So the lashes have the glue on them and they're ready to go and we're gonna pop them on. Okay. I feel very groovy. <laughs> These lashes are definitely far out. Yes, they're very <laughs> far out. <laughs> so Haley is rocking the two lashes stacked together and I'm gonna go ahead and do that on her other eye as well. Haley has on two pairs of lashes and she looks amazing. I think you can really see like the difference that makes when the lashes go on and it's just like boom. And it kind of makes, it makes the makeup look, make sense to me. Like once those lashes go on, I'm like, oh, it all comes together and it all looks amazing. So we're gonna move on to the next step. I'm the brows, with this much going on in the eyes, the rest of the makeup is very natural and very simple. They didn't really do a whole lot to the brows in the 60s because there was so much going on with the eyes. It was all this. Um, so they literally would just, some people kind of got into plucking a little bit, but for the most part, it was just like, you know, brush up your brows, don't worry about them too much. They were kind of a bit of an afterthought. So that's what I'm gonna to do today because Haley has beautiful brows oh, and you. I'm just going to use some Anastasia brow gel, brush through them and brush those lovely brows. We can maybe fill in a little bit, but honestly, there's so much going on in the eyes and, and her brows are just so lovely. I'm just gonna leave them the way that they are. And actually, I'm not done with the eyes, I lied. Um, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some white eyeliner and draw in the, in the water line of the eye. And this really pops the eye and really completes the whole look. It's a very mod thing. Um, I actually did it on Trudy in the 40s video as well. It's a trick that's been around in makeup for quite a while to really make the eye pop. So this is um, a Makeup Forever Aqua XL in pure white. And if you wanted, as I've said before, if you wanna make this a slightly less aggressive or less intense look, you could use a cream or an ivory or a flesh toned for this step, but it would, it's also, a, it's just a really good step just to tie the look together. So we're going in the waterline here. Look up for me. And we really want to get like a nice, nice amount of color in that waterline. Really wanna get in there. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry this pencil into the corner of Haley's eye so we can make sure and pop that as well. And there are so, so many variations on this eye. I really recommend just going and looking at all the different mod looks that they were and really just leaning into this, the fun of it all. So Haley's right eye is done with the pencil. I went in the waterline and also a little bit in the corner too. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on her right eye. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the white eyeshadow that we used before and just put that in the corner of Haley's eye just to really help pop that white. White is one of those colors you really kind of need to go over a few times to like give it the full effect. Close for me, Haley. And then again, just to get a little more pop too, just go over here, go over the white that we put down at the beginning. So you can see these eyes are really popping now. This is such a big look, but at the same time, it's really like the details that you do that really make a big difference in bringing it all together, making it into a cohesive, beautiful look. So we're gonna move on now. We've done the eyes, we've done the eyebrows, and 
like I said before, this, we're going to keep the rest of the makeup quite simple because it was all about the eyes. But we're, what was something that actually became popular in the 60s was contouring. Um, and they didn't really have the things that we have for contouring now, and it wasn't as an extreme thing. When I was doing my research, I did find I, that was mentioned in a few different sources, is that this was the first the first era that like contouring became a thing. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of contour on Haley, nothing too crazy. So what would they use for contour? They probably would have been using something more like bronzer back then. Okay. Um, yeah, which we don't actually recommend for doing contour now, um, but I am gonna go ahead and use, uh, this is my bronzer palette that I like to use. Um, so I'm gonna use um, NARS Laguna and uh, Shiseido number one because hi, uh, Haley's pretty fair, so we don't wanna go too crazy. Um, so we're just gonna use a nice little bit of both. This is a Chanel powder brush. Actually, turn that way for me, sweetie. And I'm just gonna give Haley a little bit of shape. Nothing too crazy. Okay, to be sweet. To the other side. Makes me think of like, you know, Sophia Loren or. Mm -hmm. um, Anita Eckbert yeah. or Ursula Andress with those like really deep, you know, cheekbones. Mm -hmm. For sure. Very like structured, strong. Very, yes. Yeah, we always like to think that, you know, we all came up with these ideas of <laughs> in the past like 10 years at Instagram. It's like, no, no, it's, it's actually been around a really long time. <laughs> and I like to do a little, a little on the jawline here. Yeah, they were, the 60s was definitely a big time for tanning. Uh, mm -hmm. Something else I read was that because the mini skirt was so popular and there was so much leg being shown that um, they sold leg makeup at the time. I no think, way. I can't, I can't, it might have been Estee Lauder, but there was a company that was selling leg makeup and bronzer and knee rouge, <laughs> which knee I would rouge. love to get my hands on. Like, talk about back to the 20s, you know, yeah. rouge your knees, and they were actually selling knee rouge. So knee if anyone sees that, please let me know, because I would love to get my hands on that. Mm -hmm. um, and next is just a tiny bit of blush. This is Senna blush, powder blush, cream blush, anything like that. Just do a little tiny color to the cheeks, nothing major. So I'm going to go with something on the more pale side like this. Mm -hmm. This is Natural Rose. I'm just gonna go in there and just give just give Haley a little bit. I think as much as they were concentrated on the on the eyes in this era, like you always want to have a little bit of color on the face, otherwise you can look a little bit drained, especially because this is such a graphic black and white look. So you do no matter how subtle it is, even a tiny bit of blush will really just help to like give the give the face a little more life. So last but not least is of course the lips. And as we know, the mods like to keep the lips very, very pale. Sometimes they would just put put concealer over them just to like make them nice and pale. Today we're just gonna stick to a nice, very light pink nude color. Um, actually probably somewhat similar to Haley's actual color. But what I'm gonna do is I have a little bit of concealer on this brush and I'm just gonna swipe that across the lips just to kind of take down Haley's natural color, just a tiny, tiny bit. And then I'm gonna be using a great a nude pinky color from MAC called Myth. So I'm just going in there with a little bit of the Myth lipstick on Haley's beautiful lips. My goodness, you have such gorgeous lips, girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight from the tube, and then I'm just gonna work it in there with a lip brush. I'm just gonna blend that in there a little bit with a lip brush. So we have Haley's lipstick on, and I think it's looking amazing. I really feel, I just love seeing a big makeup come together. To me, this is a big makeup for me, and I just, it's just so exciting just to see it all come together, especially on such a beautiful face with the hair and the, and the dress and everything. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of powder on Haley just to complete everything, and then our look will be done. This is a powder stack that I put together myself. I'm just gonna be using a little bit of Laura, Ma Laura Mercier translucent powder in the T-zone to make sure she's not too shiny, and then we'll be all set. Okay, 
So Haley is done with her 60s mod look. I think she looks amazing. This has been so much fun. And thank you so much, Haley. You were such oh, a joy to work with. It's truly an honor. Oh my gosh, this is, I love time traveling with you. Yes. You're fabulous. <laughs> thank you so much. Please follow Haley on Instagram at Haley Seal. And um, she has amazing vintage style as well and is an amazing person all around. And thank you so much for joining us. It was so much fun researching this and bringing this to you. And I really hope you can use this at home to make your days in life even more mod and fabulous. And please subscribe below if you haven't already and follow us on Instagram at MyVintageLoveBlog for even more regular updates. And we will see you at the next one. Bye.